Hey there, Jory here, and welcome back to Train Simulator. Yes, double double today with another route, taking a look at the North Wales coastlines. This came out on Monday or Tuesday. There's a new route based on an original route that Train Sim had, but it's got new like new sceneries, new improvements, new this, new that. It's a step up from the original North Wales coast. Also, for the Class 158 Super Sprinter, we have got a new Transport Files livery and make things a little bit better. Uh, it's a route I've actually been on in real life as well as passenger. So this features the line from Crew to Hollyheads in uh, North Wales. And so we're taking control of train 1 Delta 33, which is a service from Manchester Airport to Hollyhead. And we'll be taking it as far. Well, starting here at Chester, so we're kind of one station in the line already. So not like your crew stuck at Chester. Stopping at, I believe it's every, well, not stopping at every station. We are skipping a few stations on the way, but we're stopping at the majority of stations between here and Holyhead, including the longest place in the UK, if I can pronounce it correctly. Clan the Airpool, Gwingid, Gogger, Queen Job, Lantio, Silio, Gogogogh. I'm sure I butchered that, but hey ho. Uh, Previously, we'll get then shortly, uh, Avgeet, because it's still rendering. It'll take a few minutes, but it will uh, come up shortly. But yes, uh, riding 1 Delta 33, starting, so Manchester Airport to Holyhead, starting here at Chester. So let's set up our train and prepare ourselves for our service today. We depart at 59, so actually about two minutes to train up. Last key, to reset. Train forward, Canadian AWS. Got separate braking and uh, throttles, which will make use of that. DRA on one at station. Just T to open the doors. And prepare ourselves for our departure. So, <laughs> butchered eye. <laughs> I say, if I had it all stuck, oh, thanks, we'll, we'll, we'll say it when we get there, we'll say it when we get there. I'll we'll say I actually have a chance to kind of read the sign in proper. Um, yeah, so, let's get ourselves ready to go, hopefully. So we leave at 59, we got another about a minute or so, so we'll just have a look around the uh, station. Um, I will say, Chester, quite a fascinating little start when I got here. So we started on platform... Uh, this one for platform four, train rolled in, and just kind of out here, you had pretty much everything from the new Viva train D stocks to uh, Zyros to Locos, like everything, everything you could think of, just kind of sat here at Chester. Obviously, kind of if you're going train spotting, Chester, great place to do it because it has everything: sprinters, super sprinters. It's about a year ago, we used to have. Um, uh, what do you call them? The rail bike. Oh, what, what are you doing there? Uh, I don't think you should be standing on that. It's quite dangerous. Um, also got these things as well. Class 1, 175s. Uh, so I set the train lights also to active. Train lights are hit. Oh, there's actually people... Hang on. Why are you in the rear driver's cab? That... Is illegal. You should definitely not be in there. You shouldn't be hanging on to that. You should definitely not be in the driver's cab unless you've got a driver's pass. Hmm. Something not right today here at Wales. Security's gone off the uh, charts. Right, let's uh, proud departure. So release the brakes and prepare ourselves to get going. Also, the RA. I can remember that. Next station, Shotton. So let's have to say, 1 Delta 3-3. Make sure we get to speed and go through our service pattern. So, uh, from this point on, we are stopping at Shotton, Flint, Preston, Real, Colwyn Bay, Landudno Junction, Bangor, Glanvier, Pool, Gwingid, Gogge, Queen Job, Lantio, Silio, Gogogogh, Bodorgan, Tikras, Tikras, um, Ros uh, Rosenig, Valley, and Hollyhead. I'm sure I've butchered pretty much every single pronunciation on that because Welsh ain't my strong points, apparently. Um, apart from, of course, on the EPG, which is the most in the UK. Spent a lot of time practicing that one, though, I must admit. Spent a lot of time practicing that one. As ever, we are tracking our train on Third Rose Map, so feel free to uh, follow us along. In fact, I can get, hopefully, find it, a link for the uh, tracking. 
Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, we have to go to, and I'll press on that, and then it's the public link here, I believe. Answer is ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, not quite, because I know with Third Rail's map it is possible to follow that and kind of share it. Let me try and find it. There is a way you can actually share train journeys like you can on your other Ivar uh, Webby. I'll figure it out. That's one for the future, I think. I'll try and figure it out. So increase the throttle up to 50 miles per hour, which goes up to 60 very shortly. So in terms of route updates, the North Wales coast now continues all the way to Hollyhead and used to instead terminate at a different station. I can't remember which station it was though. I can get that for you in two seconds if I can uh, find a map. So it used to go to um, so it used to go to land in a junction like it used to like it still does in this sim, but from land in a junction it then continued on to um, No. Yeah, so you should continue up to London though, so that's where it kind of ended. So we went up to uh, London Junction, stopping at uh, Degenwe and London No. You now have the full line as far as uh, Hollyhead, so that goes up to the um, up to Anglesey. The bottom right, that's called Third Rails uh, Void Checks, so that's basically a train sim tracking tour. Yeah, let me try and find that public link because I know. Uh, can be shared and pinned, unless I'm looking at the kind of end bits. It's called Third Rail's Map and it links to the Third Rail's Radar at rentor.nl. Show the links. So this is this is the map. Basically shows you all the people in Transom right now using this tool. And points on the map is exactly where trains are heading and running from. It's certainly worth a look. It's not a bad look to all this. It's certainly worth a look. It's still quite new to it in terms of how all the points are and stuff. So next station is going to be uh, Shotton, which will arrive there about seven past ten. So we're not going to have time moments. Speed a little bit. It's 81 miles. The uh, journey to today. The full length of the map is about 105 miles. It's about 80, uh, 85 from the start to finish. Hollyhead to sorry, uh, Chester to Hollyhead. Welcome, Dan. How are you doing? Welcome, Channel Chat. How are you today? How are you doing? Uh, have you noticed if you're lot and text Pokemon Sims? Uh, not particularly, uh, Harry. I mean, Train Sims can be pretty good for me. Rand just sets to its uh, maximum for me. On the left hand side, passing through an airbase. This is the runway, this is the textway layout, pass through an airbase. Very good. To uh, speed again. I'm alright, I'm not too bad, uh, Dan, I'm not too bad. Had an interest at work today, but it all worked out in my favour. And uh, yeah, obviously, cannot really complain. Cannot complain. I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. No, 
are passing through the former Sandcroft stations. There used to be a station once upon a time, but has long since been uh, closed down. And what remains is kind of where the, the bank by train track splits. It kind of splits apart and then just joins back in the middle again. Uh, what if the new 3050? Uh, it's not a graphics card I personally pick up because of what happened with 3080, but if it introduces a new cheaper graphics card for those that may not quite get their hands graphics cards to really kind of, I guess, enter the market, it's not a, not, not a bad option. Not a bad option, not a bad choice. I'm sure some people get a lot of jumps out of that. I'll, uh, if, if, for those that need it, it's certainly an option in the market that I'm sure a lot of people will uh, certainly take. Not bad, not bad. I was at the Airbus factory out of um gosh, I'm not even out. That is It's not Haywarden, because that's South Wales. Haywarden, it is Haywarden. So what's one of South Wales I'm getting confused with? I remember when I went to Wales, I went down to it's just before I went to Bridge End, I went to Annoy me now. South Wales, South uh, Southwest Wales. Yeah, that that was Haywarden. I, so you know, my geography's not too bad. I just don't specialise in geography in Wales. Um, where did I go to then? Haverford West. Haverford West. I went to. So when I went to Wales back in November last year, I started off from London, of course, where I live. I went up to um, went up to Crewe. With uh, Adventure West Coast, West Coast, uh, Adventure West Coast, I changed to Transport Wales to Chester. Chester, I then went down to Clunvia PEG, Clunvia PEG back to Bangor, Bangor down to um, Port Marion, Port Marion to Aberystwyth, Aberystwyth to Haverford West, Haverford West to uh, Swansea, Swansea to Bridge End, Bridge End to Cardiff. And then, is that a day to kill? Cardiff to Belfast, Belfast to. Um, where did I go to after Belfast? I went to. No, shit, it's actually again, am I? Um, I went to. Uh, what's the station called again? To the airport called again. And Durham Tees, Durham Tees, and then Durham Tees, I went to. Um, See, my journey was all over the place. Darlington, Darlington to London. There you go. <laughs> that was my journey. Welcome to Shots. So it's Shots on Low Level. There is a Shots on High Level station, which the uh, platform you can kind of find just here. So the footbridge pathway that takes you up and across. That's Shots on High Level. Well, this was spelled in Welsh. Uh, we're going to pronounce that. I'll, I'll give it a go. Uh, Gwidboadeth. Gwidboadeth. Get a bad eye, like that. <laughs> we're at Shotton, that's what I care about. If it says Shotton, we're at shot. Oh, it doesn't. Moving on. Next station for us will be Flint. Uh, hi, maybe a question. Why did you like YouTube channel? For me, I started my YouTube channel back when I was in college, and it was just something kind of for me to do as a bit of fun, really. Just, yeah, create videos, upload a few things here and there, just something to a bit of fun, basically. Sit back and. Uh, Enjoy. The next station will be Flint. So, in terms of the service pattern, there's a few stations kind of initially which are quite close together. So, there's a bit of stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping. Then we get to um, Bangor, where the service kind of so it gets a little bit longer between stations. So, it's a bit, it's a bit of a mix. Some stations are quite close to each other, some stations are a bit more distant. The longest gap is about. 11 minutes, that's from uh, real to Colin Bay. And there are some fairly frequent speed limit changes as well, so do keep yourself kind of acting on the uh, speed limits as well. Don't go too fast. Yeah, keep the train adjusted. Uh, nice following channel since most of us him. Always nice to watch. Thank you very much, DFS. Thank you for time words. I'm glad you've uh, glad you enjoyed the watch. Always appreciated. So we've now been about we've driven now ten miles from uh, Chester, where the route starts. 
10 miles in, several more to go. How do you pronounce that? I might show that weather force when that was next. Yes, so um, Liam Dutton, he's a weather presenter for I sorry, is he is he ICB Channel 4? I think he's Channel 4 actually. So Liam Dutton is a weather me meter uh, me meteorologist for Channel 4 and he studied Welsh back in Hills School himself. So he uh, one day decides to go for the full um, via PG presentation on live news and it got a bit uh, a bit viral on the internet to say the least. But uh, yes that was a problem for him to say the least. <laughs> hey it's Pensive Man! Welcome Pensive Man. It's been a while my friend. It's been a while. Those <laughs> who watch um, Nerd Cubed back in the day, Pensive Man's one of his uh, inspirations. He just sits there thinking all day, all night, forever and ever. Just thinks. Thinks and thinks and thinks. I just realised the same is also a lot louder than the uh, 700, so audio could be a little bit quieter, I think. Um, when do you hit any plans when you hit 100k subs? Uh, no plans yet, Decadius. Could be a long, long way away. That being said, we have hit uh, 36,000 today, so a massive, massive, massive to get in that big 36k. We're pushing for 40 this rate, which is absolutely phenomenal. Number I never thought would ever reach. So now approaching Flint, we are we are behind schedule at the moment. Highly ahead, we should arrive at 44. So not too bad behind schedule. Just need to uh, kind of keep at it really for us to run. Uh, I'm not too bad, Martin. I'm not too bad. How are you today? Long channel. I'm chats. Hope you keep them well, dude. Just stop on the brakes. Now approaching Flint. In terms of scenery, this is a very beautiful route. So we're just going to get into the mid towards the mid-portion of it so as we start approaching Medina Junction. The scenery gets really uh, fab in this. So we'll try and point out some of the landmarks on the way as well. So as we go down now, we need to hit about 30 miles per hour as we enter the platform. It's head on the high end for that. We're a minute behind schedule. Nothing we can't uh, catch up with really. As long as we keep the speed limits, we should do alright. Also, um, so to start with passing wise, this train does run every station to uh, Bangor. And from Bangor, the rest of the stations are actually request stops. So you need to speak to the guard, say, hey, I'll stop here, I'll stop there, I'll stop here, I'll stop there. And then the guard speaks to the driver, signal train to stop, and then board them to start the train. So, um, climb the RPG. Uh, Bod Bodigan, uh, Tykers, Rosnag and Valley or request stops. We need to speak to the guards to uh, disembark from. Uh, not too bad Martin, not too bad. How are you? Welcome back dude. Well, was like I saw you about 20 minutes ago. Uh, don't know much about train simulators, maybe we could do a high speed train like Eurostar or TGV. So I can do a... not tonight because I've done already two train streams today, which is a bit of an overload. But, we'll start to do a few more trains and streams in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we can definitely do TGV. Uh, Bud Organ, sorry, thank you, Connor. I presume you're the, uh, the local knowledge. No, no, local knowledge. Local knowledge today for the uh, our destinations. So, very quick doors open and closing. Obviously, not many passengers boarding this parking here. Uh, Bod. Bud Organ. Bud Organ. Bud Organ. Bud Organ. Kai. Come on, you want to help me out of here? Uh, Bud Organ. So if you'd like knowledge, Connor, how how does this sound to the local ear? So let's say Clan via PG for me, pronouncing it in full would be uh, correct from Anglesey. There we go, Anglesey, very good. So for the, for the local eye, how does Clan via Puil Queen Gilgog Queen Job Lantiosili of Gogog Go sound from someone who just kind of practiced it over a couple of weeks based on a uh, Google, really. <laughs> I 
I'm certainly no expert in your uh, Welsh pronunciations. Uh, bosh, absolutely bosh. <laughs> Thanks, Kai. Um, what was going in TGV? So I believe the main route you get in that is um, Mediterranea, which is Marseille to Avignon. It's about 200 kilometers of track, 200 kilometers of track. Long route. Also has a map in Train Sim World, which is very good. I'm actually the Train Sim World version that when we stream it one day. But uh, mostly correct, mostly correct, except the L and CH characters, because I know that LL would be like a Ch sound, I believe. And yeah, probably here from John. And the Ch sound, I don't. I'll see. I have no idea where to start with that. To be fair, that would be completely new to me. <laughs> Mostly correct. I'll take that for 26 characters. I'll take that. Next station is uh, Pristartan. Pristartan. Uh, you got really bored one day. So you spent 20 and 30 minutes just learning how to pronounce it correctly. Well, there you go. Because <laughs> for me, the way I kind of learned it was mainly because I was going to. I, I was going to visit Wales. I already decided I'm going to visit Wales. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. And of course, my first stop would be the north. Well, actually, originally I was going to plan going from south to north, south from Cardiff, and kind of going border north to south. Sorry, south to north. But then I realised that I'd get a trip into Northern Ireland as well if I start north and then go head south. So I did it that way instead. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I went about it. Uh, it's similar to the but lower and tougher. So the so the two L's are K. And the CH is K, stuff like that. K and K. When will we get there? I will try and pronounce it kind of at the station where I've got the sign in front of me. There's two signs. You've got the one that's kind of the traditional um, kind of VAPG sign, which is the National Rail Standard. And then you have one at Transport for uh, Arriva Trains fitted, back when they operate this line, which. Uh, Broke it down into pronunci pronunciable chunks, basically. Uh, time for Arts Speed and Absolutely, yeah, TFS. Um, where have I been to? I've been to. So I've been right, I've been to. Um, that's annoying me now. Uh, Biarritz. And then Biarritz headed down to uh, Spain by bus. Uh. So, cheers, we're going to the lower. It's like clearing th phlegm. <laughs> Gods. <laughs> oh gosh. Land. <laughs> Cl Cl oh, oh, we'll, we'll give it a go. I'll try and clear some phlegm at the same time. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the whole. The whole village is named out of. Basically, just make a tourist attraction, really. Because uh, I believe the whole village is kind of sponsored by. Walkers of something. I can't remember the company name. Walkers, or something Walkers. Not the Crisps, another the company. Again, I'd have to look into the uh, whole mix up of that. Right, <laughs> let's carry on, shall we? Passing through the former Greenfield station, which I believe there is an eye to reopen it, but unlikely at the moment. Uh, never been to Belgium before. Never been to Belgium. That's uh, on the list. On the list. Let's get out for whistleboards and press the horn at the right times. Uh, Rotten Walkers, everyone needs to take this. <laughs> That's being crisps though. <laughs> I can't remember there was one, where did I go to? I once went to, um, up in Inverness, Fort, I can't remember if it's Fort George, Fort William, I think it's Fort George, um, so they have a piece, I'm going to have to try and find a picture of that, because it's just kind of like, it's a case of like, how does that end up there? Let me, uh, so that's 1575. That for all two to keep training on posting. Uh, right, so if we go to Inverness, it is Fort. Fort George, yes. 
And they have... So I've got a photo of it still. I hope I do. So they have a piece of Adolf Hitler's desk. Oh, I can't find... Okay, there's another piece like where... It, who, who donated it? I can't remember who donated it, but it was... Such a mismatch, kind of... What, why do you own that? Um, it's annoying me now, I'm going to try and find it. I'm going to try and find it now. Basically, it's just... <sighs> when did I go? I went... Oh, here it goes. It's about my scenery in this route. When we get to here, it's kind of along the coast. Scenery, honestly, it's... Well, it's fantastic, to say the least. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's Fort George. Uh, does your workplace on the right? Mostin Docks, very nice, Mike. Everyone, go find Mike Works. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, 10th of October. Um, 10th of October, right. October, October, October. Right, so. I haven't got a photo of it still. So I went to the. Um... No, don't have that anymore, that's a shame. I, I'll, I'll try and find it at some point, kind of where it came from, but it was so kind of out of ordinary. I'm sure it was like a shortbread company that owned it at some point and then donated it. Something like that. Right, I've got a train to focus driving, I think. Uh, so we should be approaching press pre starting in about two or so minutes. Um. Oh, okay, any light? This is Train Simulator, Avgeek. Not Train Sim World, this is Train Simulator. Uh, watch our new stream, so I finished last stream. This is a new stream, new routes. So we did class 700, Thames Link. On the run from uh, Seven Oaks, sorry, from Blackfriars Seven Oaks. Also went as far as Swanley. And this is another route I wanted to do as well. So this is the original stream for today, but the train came out and kind of bumped two in one day. But hey ho. We'll do some more Thames Link streams as well in the future, don't you worry. We'll try and do some more. Train in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, this is what I really wanted to do originally because this is a route I've actually been on in real life as a passenger quite recently. Up to a kind of the EPG. There you go, so that was a ward. <laughs> so, F5 miles per hour, four throttle. I believe that's the max speed of this train. The answer is. Tail line, 90 maximum speed, so almost maximum speed. Not really going to really get much to the uh, top of this. Yep, yeah, class 158 is then. Class 158. This is train simulator, mile one. Tracing mates up. That's what this is. I presume not yet past uh <laughs> no, no, it's coming up, we're just behind schedule. Fair enough. There it is. 
Right, kill the throttle. Start playing a bit of braking. Uh, home and concentrating in world, you love the super sprinters, amazing units, they're on your line as well as 157s. And we've got to start to that with the um, release of the... Hmm. Give frame rate a second to catch up. Oh, I'm not crashing now if you train sim, I'm going to be so upset if you have. Honestly, I've not had this impression on me ever. There we go, no, it's caught up again. Fair enough. <laughs> heart attack there. A so just flight sim, of course. You have heart attacks on the sim freezers. Um, no, this line does not pass through uh, Shropshire. Super Trini. Uh, one of these in a river livery passed by town daily. Never seen cabin until today. So, we'll, when we top a. If I'll show you down cabin now. So, it's not too massive, really. So, you've got a compartment on the left. Part on the right, part on the right is kind of a second and seat. All you control is a set of wipers to this window. And on the left, you've got your main drive control panel. You've got the centre bit here, which kind of locks and opens for the sake of combining two units together so passengers pass through about to get into the cab. If you ever are on these trains in real life, head, if it's four cars set, head to the middle of the train. The driver's cab window usually is in the open position. You can just have a look aside when the train's uh, when the cab particular is uh, not in operation. So we'll have a look at the uh, train for external. Yeah, I almost had a heart attack there, but no, no, it's him picked up. <laughs> Back in action. See where a form platform used to be, once upon a time. No longer in operation. Yeah, if you're on these trains, just head to the middle, where the two trains kind of combine, and within side, as you kind of pass from one carriage to the other, you can generally look into the cab, just place a little window. There we go, stop finished. Let's now the part towards um, real. So release the brakes. Goes down, is it? Ooh, that's a downage. <laughs> no, it seems to be alright for me at the moment. It seems like it's in too bad of a state to hold this squad. I know Super Trini, always happy to chat. Um, imagine a bit of machinery. To be fair, I do prefer my networkers over my sprinters. They're not bad trained sprinters. I mean, there was a sprinter that once was but never came to be. Um, hang on, so it's class 150, which is the sprinter that we all know and love. Class 151. Here we go. So, when the when the sprinter train first um, became a thing, uh, British Rail at the time gave it to two companies, Braille and um, Metro Camel. So you had a Braille unit, which looks like this, and a Metro Met Cam model, which looked like this. And basically, the decision was, they put it out for the two rail companies to create a train, whichever performs better, and um, was cheaper to produce, they'd go on to create the next generation of trains out of. So obviously the 150 beat the 151 and therefore the 150 became the next train. Uh, if we go to the kind of back uh, so 1980s British Rail was operating large feet of first generation DMUs which was constructed over prior decades of the designs. Uh, for my internet strategy, British Rail recognised planners would be considered a cost of dirt. And so basically they decided to create a second generation of DMU and gave it to Brel or um, Metcam to design it. So we could have got trains that look like this, running the regional rails of the UK, but they preferred this design 
and all trains in the future were based on this design. Same with the um, networkers for EMUs and a lot of third generations DMUs as well, where they created a train that was cheap and efficient to run and essentially based all future train designs off of that. Until, of course, Britain became privatised and then the plans were sold to Bombardier, who created the Turbo Star and the Electro Star based on these network plans. So to this day, the um, network design still exists through the Turbo Stars and Electro Stars. And Sprinters still operate as well as second generation DMUs. But honestly, I mean, visually, I do actually prefer the 151 over 150. It does look like a smash little train, that. But, uh, hey ho! That was uh, once an option, never came to be. Uh, do you enjoy the Class 700? It's not terrible. It needs some work done. I'm not going to lie, Owen. It's not terrible. It does need some work done to it. Certainly from an audio perspective, the audio needs to be completely redone. I mean, the samples themselves aren't bad. They're just really poorly utilised. The model's fantastic. The model looks fantastic. There's a lot of detail in the train which looks great. Um... Physics again, pretty good as well, so I can't complain about physics. The cab's a little bit limited, because the problem with having modern trains on this platform is that stuff like digital displays and screens don't properly work. So you are limited in regards to actual screens. That's kind of thing. It looks great, it feels great, it sounds naff. The, plat the, the simulator is almost too old to kind of really run such a modern train. But we'll see. Time will certainly tell. Now approaching real. So it should be hard to about 10.31 here, so we've got a minute behind schedule still. In terms of our ETA into Hollyhead, we are still looking about 7 minutes ahead of schedule, so we can catch up later on without too many problems. And again, depends if we decide to stop all the stations or not, between um, Bangor and Hollyhead, given that they all are request stops. The answer is yes, we will stop at all the stations, because, you know, all the stations. Welcome to real. Uh, favourite train, either class, well, it's a networker, so either class 165, 166, 365, 465, 466. One of those trains, which are all basically the same, just either diesel or electric, uh, one of my favourites. I do love me my networkers. Right, so, stop here for a couple of minutes, let passengers board and disembark, and it's the map. As soon as we're ready to depart, need some breaks. Fire throttle. Um, welcome, Ricardo. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to chat. How are you today, dude? How are you? No worries at all, Owen. No worries. Always happy to answer. Not a problem. Always happy to answer. Next station, Colwyn Bay. For my proceeding here, the air thrust a little bit. Hit junction and then up to 85. Uh, do I for a class 43 or class 800? Um, hmm, what can I say? Because I've been on both units. The 43 I rode between London and Reading. Also, I rode it between. Um, what did I go to? I got off at. When I went to Penzance a little while ago, I got off at... I almost want to say Preston, but it's not Preston down there. I got off at... I'll have to double check. <laughs> Sorry my life, let me double check. So I ride it between London and Reading. I've ridden it between Plymouth and um, Penzance. And, I mean, the Mark III carriages themselves are great. Mark III's fantastic carriages. 
With an 800, it's all built in and unified into one unit. They're not bad trains, per se. They're certainly not as comfy as the last-gen stocks. I'd probably say Class 43. Not because of... kind. Of, I mean, if I was, if I was going to say kind of based on efficiency and cleanliness and environmentally threatening that stuff, then yes, the Class 800 is by far the superior train, also accelerates faster and can hold top speed for a long duration. Um, Class 43s, they're a lot dirtier, older, slow acceleration, but from a comfort level, passenger-wise, they do feel a lot comfier. But I wouldn't say, then again, the engine's not terrible. 800 I rode from London to, so I've been to London to, um, so I've done Oxford, uh, Paddington, I've done uh, Swindon, I've done Plymouth, of course, down to Plymouth in the 800. It's not a terrible train, it's just not as comfy as Class 43 as a passenger. Uh, this is Train Simulator, George, Train Simulator. Not wild, just plain old train sim. Right, so we are not stopping at um, Abergay and Penzam. Uh, sorry, Abergale? Abergale? Something like that. And uh, Penzan. Not such a stopping at. We'll speed through at 75 miles per hour. So I'll just quickly speed over to the, uh, the platform. Let's watch our service pass up through. There's a number of caravans, I presume. It's some sort of uh, touristy spots. Got another super sprinter heading out the other way. We'll be on this track over here. And again, just love the details from the stations. Really are fantastic. Very, uh, very pretty indeed. Abigailay, Abigailay. Thank you very much, yeah, Connor. Abigailay. <laughs> Abigailay, sorry. Abigailay. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there with Welsh. <laughs> Nice donation. Um, it was about two hundred pounds in one go. Pretty high, I say. About three hundred. <clears throat> so we'll be now to the next station, Colwyn Bay, and that'll be in approximately six minutes. We'll be arriving six minutes. Uh, is it though? I'd say no to Lee as it's going down to hotel. Well, there you go. I think Connor's the uh, the big one for Logan Lodge, I'm afraid. So, yes. Abigail Lay and uh, other place. Abigail Lay and Penzan. Uh, would I rather be a pilot in real life or a train driver? Prob. Easy one for Papa Tang. Tango, London Gatwick, Post Message. Why am I listening to Ivo, ATC? Huh. <laughs> um. Do you have that open? Uh, I mean, this is. Uh, so, no, if you in real life, this is a uh, sharp pronunciation. I'll let you two uh, battle out your Welsh pronunciations in chat. Getting hit another coastal bit of the run. In the North Wales coast, I'd say it's a very pretty, very scenic railway in real life. And the sim, train sim, given the Asia platform, they've done a really good job at actually recreating this. I'll give that out four credits. They've done a fine job at this railway. And you're a pensive man, join us the uh, coast as well. <laughs> I 
So you should be about 75 miles per hour and then keep on the uh, acceleration. Uh, should the North Wales Coast hike if you're interested in that thing? Um, absolutely. I do like my walks and my uh, hikes. It would be something I'm definitely interested in. Not gonna lie. Because when I went to over to, when I went to Oban for a couple of days, I went for two nights, three days. Pretty much what you do on Oban is just walk and hike for a bit. So I went up to the uh, top of Hevo. That was quite a trip. Scotland's again a beautiful country. If you like your walks, if you like your hikes, it's definitely worth going to. Right, Colwyn Bay. Now approaching. Is that route really doing? Uh, is that a route or a route where you? Put a train which runs a line that can't sit somewhere and use. Um, so this is a free road scenario, technically. But you, so yeah, this is the train that comes with the route. But this is a free road scenario. Yes. Uh, World Camping is legal in Wales. I don't mean I went to a hotel. Gosh, I like hiking, but I like my luxury as well. <laughs> nah. To be fair, um, bed and breakfasts or hostels. I do hostel quite nicely as well. When I went to again, going back to Oban, um, in that place, a kind of a self-serve place. So you had a kitchen access, which you can use to cook and then clean stuff afterwards. Got myself a very nice lamb steak on the, my second night. Because I've never seen a co-op more well-stocked than that on the island of Oban, of all places. Um, yeah, so, I like my self-serve places. Just give me a bed, give me access to the kitchen, and I'll live my best life. <laughs> Also going alongside the uh, the expressway as well. Uh, if I was in World War Two, I'd choose to crew on a bomber or a submarine. Which I go for? I'd probably go for a bomber. Only because my great grandfather was a Polish um, armourer for the uh, 304 squadron. Don't know much about him, doing a lot of research about kind of what he did in the war. But uh, yeah, great grandfather, 304 squadron, was an armourer. Quite uh, a well ranked one as well. That's a three car stop marker, I'm going to push my way to the. Uh... I guess we'll stop here instead. Any point we switch to the six car marker, which. Uh... We need for our four car sets. Alright, it's now at Colin Bay. Cool, thanks, hacked up. Next station is Landudna Junction. Landudna Junction. So about seven minutes between the uh, next stop, which is one of our longer runs. In fact, to London, the junction to Bangor, that's the longest run between stations, and that's at 17 minutes. So it's almost 20 minutes of just non-stop driving. Also, a good opportunity to catch up our timetable, even though we are a tiny bit behind. Uh, what do you prefer using? Ultra Powerhouse or Dotto Games Store Trains on on any games? Um, I mean, you can really use them on the train sim, first of all. I mean, Ultra and Powerhouse are known for their super high quality and really good audio, so I'd probably say Ultra and Powerhouse because they are kind of the top tier developers for Train Sim. Um, I've got their 313, fantastic train. I've got their. I can never remember the name of the units, but the ones that come after the. 
Is it? Are they desirators that comes after the uh, Electra stars? They're not desirators, aren't they? They're some things. But I've got the um, West, the Westman and Trains version of that. 350s? Yeah, I've got the Ultra Powerhouse 350. Very good pack. They got, they've got some really good packs, I'm sure. I'd highly recommend their stuff. Uh, there's a Senior World, a Pizza Hut, Mackey's, KFC, and Tesco next to Junction. Because, yeah, it's quite a well popular place there, London, no? It's got compensation as well within the town area itself, so. Well, quite played because again, I've been to Bangor. Didn't do much in Bangor apart from walk up to the old pier, do a U turn, head to Marks and Spencer's, buy a sandwich, and then wait for the bus to um, Aberystwyth. Not Aberystwyth, I went to um, Port Marion first. Port Marion, then Aber Aberystwyth on one day. Yeah, I, I, I do adore Wales. Beautiful country. I do need to spend a bit more time there again in the future. So you're running alongside the uh, North Wales Expressway, which is basically just a motorway that runs alongside the, uh, the railway line. Of course, in a train, a little bit faster. Also, very well maintained. A bit of expressway is all grass covered. Yeah, it's not a. Uh, so I can't, I can't compare that, sorry, really. This is a very, very good route. And the train itself, the 158, not, uh, not bad if you miss the loco, this one. It's a, it's, a, it's a train sim classic, this. Has been pushing for a little while now. It's not a bad option. Slowly reducing speed a bit as we approach London note. And then Conway, that's another station that we will not be calling at on the service. We will not be calling at Conway. Next station will be Bangor. The A55, there you go. Oh, it's an A road, not a motorway. Fair enough. Correction there. Yeah, it's junction quite town. Junction is a stop where you can switch to try and. Taking off then to, to Ginwe and London Note itself. The Ganwe, the Ginwe. One day draw <laughs> I presume these are then very little disused bits of track, just based on how rusty and old the rails are. In fact, they don't really go into platforms either. They kind of just coast into nowhere. Now, that's kind of a platform bit, but don't think it's used very often. Because Wales used to have a very extensive railway network, massively cut down in the 1960s, but it used to be pretty much anywhere to anywhere by rail back in the day. Right, so now approaching platform four. Another service arriving, got 175 GFW colours. Just got another Super Sprinter running through. Oh, so is that a shuttle? Oh, hang on. So is this a shuttle that just runs between uh, London and London the Junction? Is that how they operate? Three car, 175, back and forth, all day long. That's where we can change. Fair enough. Alright, so we need to stand to, well, so it's 45, now we've got junctions. 
We'll try and spot out for Conway Castle as well, which I believe is not too far from the uh, train station. I would say nay too far, but nay too far, that'd be a uh, Scottish nay. I and nay. In fact, there you go. Conway Castle. So it's one of the bigger local landmarks this place. Got very uh, <laughs> well designed bridges well alongside it. Uh, stylized to fit the locality. In fact, it's a tunnel and a bridge. Very uh, stylized to fit the uh, local. So yeah, not stopping at Conway, passing right through. And very shortly as we leave the castle grounds up to 75 miles per hour. Uh, yes, I've been the same thing for real life. I was on the train this morning, so I use it to go to work. And make a few connections on the way as well. The Thames Inks, but my journey to work every morning. Right, up to 75. At this point with 36, 7 miles to go, sorry, 39 miles to go, we are about halfway through the journey. Plenty of, uh, plenty of time to go, plenty of ground to cover. This, also now the part of the route I'm no longer familiar with. So the original transient route ends up at um, Ladudno, so junction up to the north. Uh, this is now all new, brand new route and track for train simulators up. So this has all been added to the North Wales coastline. This is all fancy new scenery that we've uh, never seen before, essentially. So hopefully, touch wood, we get some pretty good scenery on the uh, the way through. Of course, uh, Clanvier PG being the big stop that we're all interested in. Time-wise, we are still looking like about a minute behind schedule or so. So we should, part we should be passing at Bangor 11.06. Yeah, we've got a little while to go into each other's station, giving us again the longest stretch track between uh, stations. Due to be to 55 as we enter the Penmanback Pen Tunnel. Penmanback. Still can't pronounce these words. <laughs> Let's the other side, back to uh, 75. So I presume the tunnel and the uh, cancer turn on that. I was see some reduction in speed. And my back station coming up around the corner. Get another way pass through. So some services will stop. At these kind of local, more rural stations. For most trains, Bangor will be your next station on the way. Give a need, I believe is the, uh, the pronunciation. Give a need. Or give a need. So over in the uh, station of the heads, 
where the expressway passes overhead. Switches sides as we enter the uh, station nearby. So we're up to the footbridge, I think. Just look down at the uh, track and train passing by. Uh, this is Train Simulator, New Bricks Train Simulator. This is the, uh, the old of the platforms, but a lot more content wise than the routes. Been a bit of throttle in train running now since we are about to reach the increase of speed again. Soon passing through Clanvier the Chan station. Uh probably prefer train sim Hmm. I don't know. It's difficult to say. Train Sim World has more gra better graphics and kind of more better realistic trains, more functionality within them. Uh, train Simulator has a lot more content behind it, so that's in the, uh, it's, it's the other platform, therefore a lot more variety, and uh, in some cases, some of the routes on this sim is actually really good as well. So it's, it's, it's difficult for me to say, I do like both platforms a lot, but I'd say probably Train Sim World gets the crown, just because its functionality and graphics just trump Train Sim in a lot of ways. As long as I don't enjoy both platforms, this platform certainly does uh, does it my pick in occasions. Can we have a chance coming through now? I have got just straight to my line, yes. I have a few shoes at the pass as well. About 10 minutes away from Mango. 10 minutes. Last bit of the route from Bangor to Hollyhead. It's like about half an hour to uh, get as well from uh, full length. So yeah, it's not a bad length run. This 105 miles. From start to finish. If you start all the way at um, so we start at Chester. If that's in Crew, the whole run will take maybe two hours and ten minutes, two hours and fifteen to finish. So you do get quite a bit of track with this line. You do get quite a fair bit of a route. But I do. Yeah, we are, we are running the majority of it, so we started at Chester, which is one station down the line which the route serves, but it's in the service pattern that I read on Real Life when I uh, went here in November. How late are you? We've been going for about an hour or so, Sonny. We've got another maybe hour to go to the end, so you're about halfway there, dude. We're about halfway there. But we're now entering the, uh, the more interesting bit of the route, so plus we've left behind all the uh, easy we don't see some places. The second station we're stopping at, so not the next station, just Bangor, the following station is the Long Space MD UK. So that's the, uh, the really fun one. I'm going to sit here in about five minutes just trying to pronounce till we get it right. <laughs> now you're doing alright, dude. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat. How are you today? You are in good, good time. Good, good time.
So I'm trying to keep an eye out for these whistle boards. Sometimes I get them, sometimes I don't. Just remember to uh, at the right time. So every level crossing, every barrier, every footpath, just need to horn to let any passers by that train is approaching, and therefore they need to either move their vehicle or walk faster. Uh, so this is, yes, this is the North Wales coastline that I went, so all mods I use in the stream are this in description, which is pretty much North Wales coastline and Thadra's map. That's pretty much it. Uh, welcome Victor, how are you doing? Welcome channel, and chats, how are you today? How are you? Kind of guys tunnel coming up. Increase speed again, bring it up to about 75. We're really just going to keep the speed constant. Don't be slow down too much, too often. Uh, go get your route tomorrow. Yeah, no problem, dude. So I say it came out on months so My little cheese egg came out. It's quite a new route. It's based on an older route that Trenton had, but it's now no longer on sale. They've replaced it with this one. And this features line all the way from Crew to Hollyhead. I'm sure I'm see. So you do get quite a bit of route to this. Quite a long track. It's not a bad run. Not a bad run by any means. We'll uh, we'll certainly get a lot of use of the enjoyment out of it. I'm not a great hammer angle at all, was it? <laughs> How about passenger cabin? How are they doing in the back? All looking good? Ooh, better done now. Now pushing Bangor. Right, WS. That's going to let me to the speed slowing down. Dropping down to 50 miles per hour. And the left hand turn coming up, which comes just after Bangalore Junction Tunnel. Uh, Depends on the cab lights, but you know the rules. So do I. No cab lights in the train. Although, I believe there are gauge lights somewhere in this train. Let me try and find them. Exterior lights, engine stop button, preferably not that one. Where are the odd gauge lights? There's a switch somewhere on the down train. Uh, that's our reverses. Ah, here we go. Uh, instrument lights. There you go. Off, on, it's much better. And probably use a speedometer in the tunnel. Right down to 15 now. Now approaching Bangor. And this station looks just like Bangor in real life, let me tell you. Visiting here in November, stopping here, for walking down to the uh, coastline, old pier, and then back to the bus stops. This is <laughs> just like in real life. Station design, the footbridge, the platforms, the two lines in the middle. 
Gosh, this is... Fair, fair play, Dovetail. This is very, very well done indeed. Uh, I'm a volunteer train driver myself. I win. Volunteer train driver. Uh, did I hit the wrong train class in the thumbnail? Probably. Okay, I changed it in a bit, dude. Sorry. Yeah, probably put the wrong class number myself down. Um, yeah, so, welcome to Bangor. So, it's this, I mean, in terms of accurate representation, yet, yeah, so you got kind of, I don't know, you got the phone booths outside. So, you've got a bus station, a bus stop kind of here ish, kind of up the road a bit. But if you walk down the main road to get closer to the coastline. Uh, that's a superstore, but this is Sainsbury's or a Tesco. Uh, head down the road. Yeah, the senior college ends, but it's carried on down the main road. You get towards the coast. The coast has an old Victorian age pier on it, which you can walk up and down. Yeah, since that's the surrounding area, this has been very well done from uh, Dovetail there. And the station just looks superb. Right, so the part's at. 11.06, we are kind of back on time now. Not too fast since it's 50 mile per hour limit. Go through junctions up to 50, through the Belmont Tunnel, and then we kind of go underneath the uh, the main road here, so we get, we, we, we merge the main roads, share the same bridge footprint, so right on top of the train, and then, far side, we then split up again. Right, up to 50. Got half an hour or so to the end of the routes. Making not bad timing at the moment. And again, all stations at this point on are now request stops. Technically, we don't have to stop at any of them unless passengers request a stop. But uh, we'll stop at all of them, just for the sake of stopping it more, really. Also, I'm not going to type out this next station. I'm going to find a way to copy and paste it because it's going to be such a long one to fill in. Uh, no seven bids. Train simulator is not free. Train simulator costs about twenty five pounds, but does go on sale regularly and get about a tenner in most cases. But no, unfortunately, train simulator is not free. You do need to pay for it for Dotar Games. Available on Steam. Available directly on Dotar Games websites. If you're on console, you have the option of Train Sim World. But this one is a uh, PC only. about 40 miles per hour. Uh, do you have any add-ons, uh, Victor? Yes, I've got loads of add-ons this thing. Um, yeah, loads of routes, loads of trains. I mean, I've used trains now since about... I've used trains since about 2012, so... After it became Dove Talk Street, 2013 I first used it. So, after it became Rail... Train Simulator, before Railworks, all that. 
So, 2013 was the second year I was available on Steam, and since then, I've been buying root packs, or Dovetail Games brought me a pack to stream and showcase on the channel. But, yeah, over the years, I have accumulated a fair number of roots, fair number of packs. And even going back to, like, old Train versions, like, if you buy Train Sim 2014, a key for that, for example, you get all the 14 roots for the um, modern Sim, because it all backs on passports and all that, so... Certainly, uh, over the years, I have accumulated a lot. From Dothal Games, from purchases of my own accord, from keys that I've been given, from this and that. I had one guy on the chat once who was like, hey, here's a Steam key for such and such, and I went and downloaded that. Over the years, I've committed a lot. Lots of freewares as well. There's a lot of freeware routes. So, for example, the um, dis Virtual District line is good freeware routes. Uh, the Sutton Mole Valley line, very good route. One day on the British station, and that. And there are a few good routes as well for it. It's not completely. Uh, Lost in time. And welcome to Anglesey. Now approaching Clanvier Pulguingilgoge Queen Jo Blantio Silio Gogogoch. The longest place name in the UK. Very shortly, we come up towards a nice. Uh, it was a former signal box, now it's a controller of a crossing desk. Sorry, second, so yeah, second longest for us. It's the longest place in the UK, although it's only the second longest station name, because I believe the, um, the Cardiff Airport one. Cardiff Roosevelt Airport train station, I believe that's got a longer name. But in terms of one word, this is certainly the uh, longest. Short platform, I need enough for single carriage. So request stop, so at this point I've spoken to the guard saying, Hey, can I get off a kind of the RPG, please? And they're like, Yep, sure, no problem. Stop the train, we get that. So short little platform for <laughs> the longest place name. Welcome to Clan Vie Puil Queen Gilgoge Queen Job Lantio Silio Gogogoch. What a place! What a place! There you go. So, Transport for Wales. So, when Arriva Trains, when they first um, operated the line, they put out this sign, which kind of helps you spell it out bit by bit. Clan Vie Puil Queen Gilgoge O Queen Job O Lantio Silio Gogogoch. But uh, yeah, certainly uh, a bit of a mouthful for this. Um, all sponsored by Walkers of Wales, and it's all kind of restored and pristine and all this and all that. The station building itself is closed. Over here we've got a shopping centre, kind of dedicated city as well. I say city, it's kind of a tiny little town. But um, yeah, the actual name itself is basically just a fun on a, a display on just kind of tourism. So pick a long name and then go for it basically. But uh, yes, this is. There you go. Put it on the map. Clanvier Paul Queen Gilgog Gay Queen Job will land your silly of Gogog. How long has it done that place name? Um, about three weeks at work. Because like I said, I planned a trip to Wales, and the Clanvier PG was one of the stops I was definitely going to visit. And so, every day at work, when it was a bit quiet, like away from peak times and all that. I just take a minute to kind of listen to the announcements, or just to read it, or look at that sign on Google. It took a bit of practice, but now I can say it confidently as the only Welsh words that I can really say. <laughs> Fox's game says, "No way they added clan to the little." It's not even that difficult. Clan vie pour gingil gogger queen or draw blandy silly go go go. Now you have to admit, prices of the add-ons we get. Uh, so the prices of the add-ons and what you get off them is bad, or you say it, or um, again, it really comes down to what you're looking for in a route. I think a lot of people don't appreciate the age. When it comes to tracing later, some people don't quite appreciate the age of the sim. I mean, Railworks, the original sim, released in 2009, so sim's actually been going for about 13 years now. Fair enough, 
pricing could be adjusted in the future from Dovetail. I don't actually disagree with that. But, um... I don't know. I, say, I, I like my trains, and therefore my kind of standards are a bit lower, kind of to what I expect. Um, what do I do as a job? I work in the railways, Harry. I'm a gate line operator, train dispatcher, and customer service. So, I, I work in railways, I stream railways, I volunteer at my local railway as well as a train driver and guard and ticket officer and platform assist and whatever else I need me for. POA operative and POA driving and uh, biggest hazard ever for the poor kids that fell off my train trying to sort out sleepers. Uninjured, of course. That was a bit of a scare, but hey, how fair play to him. As I, I do I do a bit of everything at the uh, railways I am at. <laughs> Oof, yeah, sad face. <laughs> uh, he's he's alright. Last I checked, he's alright. Nothing uh, long lasting from it. Uh, welcome to Simon the Railway Enthusiast 83, how are you doing? Welcome channel, welcome chats, how are you today? How are you? So next station is going to be Bedorgan. Bedorgan. Another thing about this line is it's a very straight bit of track. Speed limits do change based on kind of the terrain around it, but it's just straight bit of track. It's on and on and on. Uh, Mission Gaming, good reasons for Aussie Land. Welcome to the uh, stream. Mission, how are you doing? Welcome channel, welcome chats. How are you today? Uh, Christ, your mental well being. Just discovered your live stream. Um, well, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we get it now. The joke's not funny anymore. Um, yeah, I mean. I've, I've had issues as well in the past, uh, Simon. I've kind of grown out of it over the years. So I see leaving school, starting work helps me a lot of that. And my recent job was definitely the... Uh... So it's helped me with that. But keep at it, dude. I mean, look for your, all, all I can suggest already. If you ever have issues with your mental state, look for your comfort zone. Look for your comfort zone. There are occasions where even I crack under pressure or things go wrong or this and that. We we all suffer from it. Some people have better coping mechanisms than others, but all I can say is keep at it, dude. Find your comfort zone, and uh, yeah, eventually things do things do turn out better. Whether it's a change of work, change of life, change of pace of a few things. I presume you're a rowing enthusiast, and I won't go into detail like how old are you, this and that, but if you're a rowing enthusiast, look at local heritage railways near you, and I don't know, volunteer for it. Stick your name down, do kind of a few simple jobs for it. So for me, my local railway I joined, uh, for me, for me, when I joined, I was an absolute wreck in a few things, but it certainly helps with my confidence building, also got me more social as well. Uh, start off as a ticket officer and platform assistant. Now I go and drive the trains. It's narrow gauge railway, it's not quite full size trains, but still, a lot of fun. And a lot of regulations. I kind of use them to go on to my career, which is now also on big trains. So just kind of look what's available for you, dudes, and just go from there. Go from there. Life's not easy for everyone, but life's what you make of it. Very shortly, they're arriving at the Gordon. Uh, it really depends kind of how long you're going to wait, Victor, for X Plane 12. There's no release date for it yet. 
certainly announced them coming, but no release date yet. So really, it comes down to how long you're willing to wait for it, really. Uh, oh yeah, and Xena is it's fantastic. So that's only coming out of um, out of London No Junction. Got a little bit bare in some places, but for the most part, it's a simple enough route. Trees, valleys, rivers. I mean, look at that. That was pristine. It's, it's not a bad looking route. This not a bad looking route. There's details pretty good. One cannot fuss. One cannot fuss. There's a little driver sitting in his cab. A uh, new route, yes, they came out. So, this is North Wales' um, coastline. This is based on an older route that Trainson used to have, but they re released it with extensions and better scenery on Monday, Tuesday. So, actually, I forgot to say at the start if you own the original North, Wales, North Coast of Wales, you get this one for free. It's a free upgrade, no extras, you get it for free. Um, if you don't own it, then you can buy this route just as it is. So. Yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. Uh, pricing, so this costs twenty nine ninety nine euros, uh, Gaming Juno, so it's about £25, that euros. Um, again, it, it, costly-wise, it can come across as expensive. The big thing that... You, I mean, I've been, I've been in simulation for years now, so I've spent thousands and thousands of pounds on flight sim, train sim, whatever sim in the past. And that's kind of... For me, I've come to come... I, I've grown to expect that from simulation. You buy a AAA title, you, it, you expect that to last you for however long till the game kind of just no longer become current. With the simulator, you're kind of buying more and buying more and buying more and more and more and more, and more on top. And um, ultimately, yeah, the costs do build up. So, is it expensive? Yes, but simulation as a whole. You look at flight simulator, train simulator, even ships in back in the day. Although, um, who developed ship simulator again? Uh, that was... I can't remember. But people buy trains and ships again. It's not super, super cheap, but simulation never has. Oh, for all the DLC. You're not expected to own all the DLC, Juna. I mean, fair enough. Again, DLC is the wrong word for it. DLC, you kind of expect it to own in order to, to complete whatever you've got. These are add-ons, not, um... Uh... The door was trying to that wrong. Uh, D O D O R G A N. There you go, just put it on the map. Boom. Um, you're not expected to own every bit of content in Train Sim because, one, you'd never drive it all. Two, it's, yeah, you're right, it's super expensive. Yeah, I have 7,000 euros in total. But you buy, you spend 7,000 euros, you'll never drive half those routes because they're either not interested to you. Or the train you're not interested in, or just yeah, you, you're not expected to own everything because most of it you're not expected to own because you're not really for you. So it comes down to really, what do you want out of it and how? I mean, I presume based on your name, you'll know you're from Finland. Uh, in terms of Finnish content, I don't think there's any Finnish routes out in Train Sim. There was one in development from a third party, Helsinki somewhere, but that never came out. But um. Yeah, you never expect to own everything. Uh, the map tracker is Third Rail's map. I'll drop a link to it in chat if you guys are interested. It's called Third Rail's map. Basically, it's you track all your train routes and then share them on a leaderboard and uh, all that. Uh, cool, cool, in time. You didn't even do a DLC routes. I'm from Belgium. Sorry, Yuna's is a very Finnish name. I know a couple of people out there who uh, have that name. Yeah, fair enough. Also, it's uh, Belgian. I know his mission. Always have to help. Uh, 
So no, Nerd Cube's another one. Nerd Cube, he first picked up trains back in 2012, and he bought no DLC for about six years, and has just played all the default. Re we, he played it once a year <laughs> in classic Nerd Cube style. Uh, next station, by the way, is um, T Cross, which is going very shortly. Um, yeah, in classic Nerd Cube style, he played it once a year, but he played with the basic content for about six years before buying his first DLC pack. Did it for a year, never did it again. Um, yeah, again, it, it comes down to what you, what you want out of a simulator. A simulator is very different to your standard kind of game, where again, if you're buying FIFA, you'll buy the base game, you may buy the World Cup pack if it's a World Cup Euro Champions or Euros Cup pack if you see the Euros that year. You can already do either a separate game, they don't integrate it as DLC, and now I think they're just took it free anyway, but um, yeah, you do that, but then you can spend a million pounds on your flipping packs and uh, trading cards and all that, ultimate team. But simulator, you're, ex you're expected to look at it from a different angle in regards to what you want out of it and how it all works. There are workshop routes as well, Victor, yes, there are freeware routes that you can get off the internet, there are workshop routes as well, so it's not all pay for, pay for, pay for. There is some freeware variety out there as well. The only thing with that though is that you may require a certain route, which you need to pay for in turn. But there's, there's, there are some routes out there which kind of are the basics that you need, like Great Western you need, the Isle of Wight you need, um, what's, what's, uh, Hamburg is kind of a recommended one for German routes. Um, I can't remember the American one, something pass for like Americans. Sand and stuff as well, but there's a few routes that kind of you're expected to have, or if you don't have them, they're super super cheap on the internet or from Steam itself, like a pound, two pound, three pound, and then that gives you enough kind of the basic content packs to go on to freeware routes as well. So again, the way you look at a sim is very different to how you look at a normal game. Uh, sims can be expensive, but if you play what you have, then it's worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. Just put a little bit more full actually, shopping a little bit too short. Uh, so yeah, in terms of timeline, so we're about we're about 40 seconds one schedule, nothing too terrible tonight. We've arrived to Bangor plenty of time, so we certainly use that to uh, cut the pace a little bit. Come on, let's go right to the platform. It's perfectly length for the fourth cars here, kind of inches either side. Probably not enough for the last carriage, but. Yeah, nice. No, just, just off, just off. Oh well, could be worse. Short platform, mate. Right, that's uh, T Cruz. Uh, how many hours do I have in train sim? I have uh, about three hundred. So not quite. 2 to 5, 2 to 3k Victor, so don't forget a lot of time my train sims as well. Train sim, or FSX, before I retired that, I had about 1,700 hours on. Train sim world, I've got a combined total of 100 and... sorry, 470. And train sim later, another 300 or so. So I've got, in terms of simulator times in total, I've got about 5,000 simulators. You know, again, x plane hours are separate, or some flight hours are separate, that I have to go through blog books and all that. But also it's combined train and flight sim, I've got about 5,000 hours because I've got no life outside of work. <laughs> Pretty much. But hey, it's, it's what I enjoy. And you guys are still here chatting away in chat, so obviously you guys enjoy the watch as well. Uh, to be fair, Simon, it took me about six years to get... 36k subscribers, and before my flight sim, I was about 6k subscribers anyway myself, so certainly no, nowhere really noteworthy until about a year ago. Oh yeah, same here, Victor. Simulators are absolutely adore. I don't know why, but there's something about recreating real life that I just really, really enjoy. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some of you seen those uh, German memes about how. Let me try and find. Let me try and find an example of a German meme. Uh, 
There we go. There you go. Meanwhile in Germany, man drives forklift. Ah, finally time to go home. Man goes home. Forklift truck simulator. Because that's what Germans do. They have a simulator for absolutely everything. Uh, let's try for another one. <laughs> there you go. Government, try working from home. German workers. Woodcut simulator. Street clean simulator. Crane simulator. That simulator. Flug uh, fire truck simulator. Forklift truck simulator. They've got a simulator for absolutely everything. Rosnik, coming up. Uh, you play on, whoops, you know, I should say she now because I was too busy looking at memes. Um, you play rest of flight and the school, drink eight hours of flight, then you're back at home for the sense. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Uh, do you know? Absolutely. Okay, so the, uh, at least the last few passengers, well, sh short platform. Passengers need to move back down the train or something like that, I don't know. It's <laughs> my excuse. Again, very quick on the uh, old doors there, the guards. Next station is Valley, our penultimate stop. Uh, average German meme. German man forgets to fully forgets to fully tighten the belt. Every old Germany, haha, <laughs> comedy. Don't get that on Daniel's on the net. Don't get that one. Must be missing part of the wider picture there. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, it'll be the first time. Alright, so next stop, our penultimate stop, Valley. God, I'm doing about three hours of trains and driving by the end of this uh, stream. Well deserved rest. And by rest, I mean going to sleep, and wake up at four in the morning to go out to work again on the trains. My life is around trains, that'll never end. Juju, welcome Bartosz, how are you doing? So it's about nine, sorry, six minutes to get to Valley, about six minutes. Ooh, that's going to be Anglesey Airfield to our left. Welcome to Anglesey. So there's going to be the uh, terminal. <laughs> Even the train sim, I'm looking at Bloom and Airports, so that's how much my life is. Um, yeah, well, I've got the airport now coming up. <laughs> uh, Joya, he needed a life. Because um, I looked at flying from here to Cardiff. Problem is, there's no routes yet. Uh, there is a route being opened soon by Eastern Airways in the. What are they flying? The Jetstream 41, but it doesn't open until April, I believe it is, so that's why it starts going, that's why it starts north heading south, because the plan was to start from south, head north, and go to and GWR back to London, but didn't quite match up for me, so they changed it around, start in the north, head to south, and from Cardiff, fly to Belfast in the Jetstream, and then uh, Belfast to uh, Durham Tees in the uh, Jetstream 30, not Jetstream 31, sorry, so Jetstream 41 from uh, Cardiff to Belfast, and Belfast to Durham Tees in the Embraer 35. So it's smart of hours, if you say that's not what's flattened. True, very true word, you're not. And if you're saying I'm running all these scores, it's uh, with the O from open, like. Oh, so Yona is it, sorry, pronounced. So, so I know that it's, um, so I know it finishes Yona, is it uh, Yona for the. Uh, Dutch, sorry, Belgian pronunciation. Approaching Valley.
Really there, so uh, Valley would pass at 36. There's an 8 minute drive to our final station at Hollyhead. Uh, something like that, we love the English version name too. <laughs> Juna. Look back underneath the uh, North Wales Expressway, you can see that's caught up with us again. The A55. Because the actual service itself, so this, this train starts at Manchester. So Hollyhead's. So you depart Manchester Airport at 8.30 in the morning. I arrive at Hollyhead at 11.44, so. 3 hours and 14 minutes this driver's driving this route for. So I presume the driver's base is in Manchester. Drives for 3 hours and 14 minutes, has a break, drives back again, and that's the end of his shift. Depending on how long his break is, determines just kind of how long the um, his shift is. So what, seven seven hour shift plus an hour of a break? Eight or yeah, eight or so hours of shift plus one break in the middle, which is pretty standard shift throw, I'd say. Well, it's four days a week, four on, four off, and then shift comes to an end. Welcome to Valley. Our penultimate stop. So, 8 to the Hollyhead, and that brings to an end our uh, driving trips for today. We've managed that points. Can we click it? The answer is. No, uh, junction is locked by the uh, Class 175, presumably coming in from um, Hollyhead later. Uh, not sure about a whole world class when it's a Victor. When I mean, you look at actual flights and up close, it's not superb the ground scenery. First ground sure the uh well actually the jet the auto narration stuff's not too bad. The first ground actually could be the high resolution, but then again from flights in perspective, you don't need super high resolution, you're at thirty thousand feet. If you've seen builders up quite close, something's gonna horribly wrong. It's gonna take a while to get a bit of proper high resolution into higher worlds, because that's just kind of how it works, I'm afraid. That's the uh, same bus we've been kind of trading outside the whole way. <laughs> that's going to be the old Reaver. Oh, yeah, that, you see, based on the, the the light blue turquoise color, that's going to be a Reaver bus, just without the branding. Reaver. Once upon a time, used quite a lot of the uh, transport out here. These days, a little more limited. I mean, the closest you're going to get to a whole kind of one-to-one -one scale map is probably the crew. Because the crew is not one-to-one -one scale, but covers the majority of the American states with a fair bit of detail to it as well. That's probably as close you're going to get to one-to-one -to -one scale world, just not quite the one-to-one uh, -one scale of it. Right, so we are now approaching Hollyhead, where this train terminates. Please remember all your belongings when leaving this train. So cut this bottle now. So I'll send train down to 15. And we have arrived a few minutes early actually. So again, we expect to arrive, well, say a few minutes early. We expect to arrive at 11.43. The actual arrival time is 11.44. So we're about seven seconds early in total. Seven seconds. Take the brakes.
Let's very gently down to 15. And then for the last half mile, it's pretty much a slow crawl all the way to the end of the platform. In terms of flight sims, XP is a little fast. A little bit, XP is a little bit better than my flight sim. XP looks worse, but something to do with thing has feet. Exactly, Victor. I mean, when I flew from um, Sunderfjord to <laughs> Tromsø, Sunderfjord to Tromsø, I mean, I was kind of taking it back my senior as well at 15,000 feet because it genuinely looks better than I thought it would. Fair enough, it'd been a little while since I asked if you explained properly. And then some of the flights I did with the Level Up 737s release, again, absolutely blown away by the uh, scenery. x is not a bad platform. It's certainly not as ugly as people think it does. Fair enough, the ground scenery is not quite as spectacular, but. It's again, it's not a bad platform. So not a bad platform. I think Microsoft Flight Sim scenery just does take it away to another level, but you're not really losing out on anything from it, are you? I hope you'll stop there because my train is still in possession of the track. So maybe you're crawling. Ah, after the semaphore, fair enough. So say crawling, be dangerous and close. We'll be entering platform two. That's what the uh, symbol there means. Approaching, uh, it's gone now, but there's a little two there. We're entering track number two, platform two. That's uh, Hollyhead. Slide downhill gradients, one in one three five. So we are picking up a little bit of speed. Just kind of adjust the brakes, keep it steady, and roll it down to the end. Uh, level up is definitely better, Victor. I mean, these are technologies to get the aircraft going, but level up is the uh, superior plane of flight sim. In X plane, sorry. Nice and gently. So you've got the tracks that continue continue on the uh, left hand side of us, so let's head up to the port and harbour. Should have taken you on a ferry up to Belfast. There you have it. Welcome to Hollyhead, where the train terminates. Please remember your belongings when leaving the train. It terminates here. And there you have it. End of the routes. The track kind of continues over here down to the end of the harbour, and then you can get ferry boats connections and all that. And scenery wise, not looking that too bad here. Quite a bit of variety, buildings, shops, roads. It's not an ugly route, this. Not an ugly route by any means. Just go back to the uh, train station bit, there we go. So, well done, you've reached the end of this quick drive scenario. Alright, how badly do we do? <laughs> and there's Victor, take care, have a good night. So, quick drive scenario, tra North, Coast, North Wales coastline, TFW, Transfer for Wales, start one station at one station, which is our destination of um, Holly Hedge, which I've actually added to the map. Um, didn't spad, didn't anything wrong particularly. We sped 19 times and we did move the train apparently while well, doors were open at one point. Whoops. Uh, we drove the 158 of course, also in the 100 space scenario as well, the Thames Link train. Not a bad run by any means actually. Pretty, pretty good. In total, 1 hour 49. That service took us to complete 1 hour 49. So uh, yeah, that was Auto Games uh, North Wales coastline. The plan for me is so Friday, tomorrow do a flights and streams, Saturday, Sunday do flights and streams. And then the plan is I think going forward, we'll do flight sim Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays. 
can try throwing a train sim on a Thursday as well. And then Friday, you know, kind of the extra bonus day for strings and all that kind of stuff. So Wednesday flight sim, Thursday train sim, Saturday flight sim, sun uh, Sunday flight sim. And again, shall mix both X plane, train sim world, train simulator, and flight sim as well. Kind of into the mix of that. Apart from that, that brings us to the end of the stream today. So that was off coast, what North Wales coastline. That was class one five eight DMU Sprinter. Lovely bit, lovely route. Just actually can't complain. 105 miles of track. What am looking last for, really? Um, costs about 30 euros on Steam. Probably will go on sale very soon as well, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, uh, yes, that's the end of that. So thank you guys for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon for some more train sim action. Have a good one, and good night. So, by the way, the background music, that's uh, Matt Hilsen, Train Sim Live.